Great morning. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. Well, we are starting off the podcast, of course, saying thank you to you guys, for to our listeners, to those who, who follow, those who support. We appreciate you. And we just want to shout out your locations. Um, one, we want to make sure you know this. I don't know that I've said it over the last couple of weeks, but we pray over the locations that follow the podcast, that follow the blog, that follow us in any type of way. When we are looking at our stats, we pray for your region, your your area, your country, your town, your city, your state. We are praying and covering you all. And we're going to continue to do that even in a greater way. Um, But we just want you to know that not only are you hearing the word of God from us and you're hearing us speak faith and the words that God has given to us, that this is also us giving back to you through prayer. And we just want you guys to know that we appreciate you for supporting what really what God has called us to do on the earth. So we thank you for doing that. And we we pray and we know that this will live on for generations to come. And we're we're hoping, we're believing, we're praying because we are she who believes. We believe that. You will walk in your calling, um, that you will hear this podcast, whether it's in 2023, 30, 23, 30, 30, 30, 30, um, however many decades and years and, and thousands of generations that come after this, that this word will spark something in you. Because if you're listening at any time, whether it's today when this is released on uh, May 3rd of 2023, or if it's May 3rd of 30. 30- 23 that God knew you would be listening and that this word was just for you so we thank you of course we um thank our supporters who listen in India United Kingdom Germany and the United States and what we share with you um, are the locations that have been um, listening for the last seven days from since the last time we podcasted right um uh, um yeah the last seven days oh <laughs> and so um we do that because well we do this podcast every every seven days usually <laughs> um but we've had other listeners in different areas that have listened in the past such as in turkey the philippines indonesia nigeria greece san lucia taiwan valencia slovenia singapore el, el salvador peru norway austria romania bulgaria australia south africa spain puerto rico ireland france mexico italy brazil Canada and Japan and we thank you all for listening but our consistent listeners over the last seven days again has been in India the United States Germany and um, the United Kingdom and of course we've got Florida always coming in strong Washington Virginia Ohio California Texas Georgia North Carolina and shout out to my girl Georgia if there's this girl named Georgia I met her earlier this year she actually physically face to face met Georgia and God has just really blessed me with her in my life. She had been listening. She used to attend um the church where I attend now. And um God I'll just say God's been good. Georgia is a, a most beautiful soul. So shout out to the state of Georgia, but also to my girl Georgia, who was listening to this podcast before I ever met her, and who has just been a um a supporter, a person who prays for me, encourages me. And Georgia girl, I love you and I thank God for your life. And so we're back to our locations. That's North Carolina, Oregon, Pennsylvania, New York, Michigan, Arkansas, Tennessee, Illinois, New Jersey, and Missouri. Now in the state of Florida, coming in strong this week is the city of Newport Ritchie is our top listeners in the last seven days. And then there's also Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Largo, Orlando, Tarpon Springs, Seminole, Palm Palm Harbor, Pinellas Park, Miami, Miami, Brandon, Palmetto, Bradenton, Paris, Florida, and Sanford. And we thank you all for listening. We thank you all for listening. And um, yeah, we just thank you guys for um, being a part of this podcast. Now, you, uh, most of you may know by now that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, of course, as a biblical counselor and a board certified biblical counselor and mental health coach and mental health first aider, certified mental health first aider and all these other certifications I carry and um, being a certified international. Listen, I got it. <laughs> The um, 
the International Association of Firefighter Chaplain. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I'm almost awake. Um, you, you must know by now that mental health matters to me right? Like it literally matters to me. Um, there's this thing that God put in my spirit because minding, uh, cause what you mind matters. He gave that to me several years ago. So what you mind, it matters. What you put your mind to what you think about, it matters. Um, one of the things I'm really, really excited about is, um, it's, it's crazy because God literally two years before he established this thing, gave me a vision of it. And I said, and I felt like that vision was so big. And I said, this thing is too big for me. But that just means that this is you. And so if you'll just show me how, if you'll teach me how, if you'll send someone to show me what I should and shouldn't do, my God, and he did that for sure, um, what I should and shouldn't do, I'll, I'll do what you say. I'll, I'll walk in this thing. But we have this group at our church called, um, it's really an outreach. And it's not uh, a, an extension of the church. It's really an outreach to reach out to the community and to those within our church to make the church a safe place to have a mental issue. Um, and notice I said not Ill- illness, but issue. And it doesn't mean that if you're labeled with a mental illness that we're not talking to you. But there are so many other things that fall under the window of mental health. We want this church to be a safe place to have a mental issue. So we've established an outreach called Mental Health Matters. And so um, I'm really excited about it because God just continues to speak and reveal things to me about my purpose in the earth and how things, you know, have just all come together from growing up and watching um, my dearest, sweetest, most amazing second number one mom, Lily Bell Lumpkin, walk through this life and um, watch her be just this Holy Ghost filled woman who also was bipolar. Um, but watch God do great things in her life, doing healing and, and all these other things. But um, anyway, I won't go into that because I'll, I'll just go off into another place because she so blessed my life. But I've, I've seen how God has orchestrated my purpose in the mental health field. And I'm excited about all he's doing to heal, deliver, and make whole his people. But this group, we have a, um, a seminar an informative seminar every single month we, we we provide breakfast a continental breakfast and we provide uh should we give you strategic um informative tools um practical tools that you can use in your everyday life to deal with all types of mental health issues whether they are created by boundaries unforgiveness hang-ups habits whatever it is because see every mental health issue isn't something that's always diagnosable or it may be diagnosable and we don't really understand what it is so when you come to these seminars you get to understand that maybe hey this is just some anxiety this is not that I don't have enough faith or that I'm not strong enough but that I have some anxiety that's that's coming you know, that, that's a part of my life. And so often we want to put a bandaid of the scriptures on things. And y'all know, I, I love the word. I love Jesus. And I'm all about his word and the scripture, because that's what this podcast and what my life is about is believing God. Right. But there are things sometimes we need something extra. Right. So this group provides this informative seminar, um, every single month and then at the end of that seminar we offer an open support group um no one the attendees aren't required to stay it's a um it's a safe place the the group the seminar it's a safe place everyone there is signed a waiver and committed to um keep the confidentiality of everyone that is there any violators will be asked not to return Uh, we've not had that issue in almost two years and we're just grateful for this space that god has allowed us to create but this group also holds support groups on the first and last Friday of every month. And this Friday, we have Ziamara Martinez who will be facilitating um, this week's um, this week's uh, support group. So if you are in the Tampa Bay area, meet us at 2110 North Hercules Avenue in Clearwater, Florida. And we'll be glad to um, just, just shine a light on some mental health things for you. Um, so anyways, on that note, knowing that it is mental health... Um, awareness month our, our our theme for the month so your girl is organized so we have things for every month of the year for this this outreach and it's stigma no more and uh it's stigma no more stigma no more stigma no more we're, we're breaking the stigma of mental health in the church you can also listen to my radio show called the reminder that is on radio ndmg and you can find that at radio ndmg.com or you can also go over to spotify spotify and look up 
uh, studio in DMG. That's in for uh, New Destiny Music Group. Um, so go over and you will be able to listen to that show. There are several episodes, some um, going back, um, you know, a year or two maybe. Um, but we have a most recent one where we had um, a guest, Carson Rory, on the show with us about a month or so back. And it is one of the most amazing shows. Not because I'm, I'm on it and it's my show. But because God like just stepped into the studio, not that he doesn't on other times, but if you listen, you'll understand, you'll, you'll hear it for yourself. You'll see it for yourself because you'll start seeing some things in your life differently. Well, here we are. Um, we're on to the title of today's podcast and it is entitled, It's In Your Head. Mm-hmm. I said it, it's in your head. So often when we hear that, that, that phrase, we're often made to feel like, or we perceive that the person on the other side of the comment is telling us that there's something wrong with us, right? That there's something going on in our head that don't nobody else understand but us, right? But I want to tell you, that's a real, real good thing right now. I'm going to give you what God gave me. Like I jumped in our book together. There's this place that I, um, I come in my house It's actually my, my office now. My, my home office um, and that's quite a story in and of itself but God has literally um, man the God we serve is faithful um, because there's been times I've just desired particular things for the business and they would show up um, I would go somewhere to volunteer or to speak or to, to, to facilitate and there would be the thing I needed there waiting for me literally waiting for me um, walk in and just put my hands on the thing and it was like that's yours um, so um, anyway, here I am in my home office and God uh, started talking to me this morning. I ran out to the office to get our book and I went back and sat in a place we used to speak and I heard him download to me there. And then I came back to this office to praise him for this word. But the word is, it's in your head. And the Lord said this to me. He said, the shift is in, in your head, changing my mind, <laughs> pivoting the thoughts. Um, it also pivots your expectation your responses, and your outcome. Everything begins with a thought. And so initially when that when God spoke that to me, I saw the Garden of Eden. It came back to me, Genesis. And I'm not saying I know what the Garden of Eden looks like, but I have moments when God is speaking to me um, that I'll have a vision of something, right? And I'll know what it represents. I'm not saying I know exactly what a thing looks like, but in my spirit, like the Holy Ghost will quicken and let me know that this is what this is. And so I saw that and it took me back to when God... Um, was creating us but how everything was a thought first right how everything was literally a thought and then it took me to jeremiah he says before i um formed you in your mother's womb i knew you i knew you what do you know where do you house the things you know in your mind right so we were thoughts in god's mind before he put us in our mother's womb he had a plan for us we existed in his thoughts thus we are here i shared with you guys a while back about how um my team our team at um New Destiny Worship Center of uh, Mental Health Matters team, we wear these shirts um, with this logo, with our logo on it that says Mental Health Matters. And we wear them to our events. And um, God said to me one, one, one Friday evening, I was getting ready for our Saturday morning seminar. And um, so, um, you know, your girl is I mean, organized in some areas, some areas I struggle a little bit, but I might make efforts to, to be ready and prepared. So um, I had hung the shirt out on the hanger outside the, the closet door. And um, I was doing some things in the ha- in my room and moving around. And the Lord kept sending me back to the, the shirt on the hanger. And so as he was speaking to me, he says that shirt exists because you saw it first in your mind. You literally saw it first in your mind. You believed me. You sat down, you you put together what I, the vision I gave you in your mind of this logo. And then you created it and it became a digital thing. And now it's a tangible thing. It's on a tangible thing that's a shirt because you saw what I said and you believed me and you moved. So that's a word in and of itself for somebody. I'm not going to go over there and mess with that because I will preach today. And I'm I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I will let the Holy Spirit have his way, but uh, that that's all I need to say. That's thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's Holy Spirit having his way, knowing when to back out of thing. That's all he gave me over there on that. So if that's your word, you better grab it and, and run with that thing. Hold it close to your heart. So everything begins as a thought. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And with the mind, we serve the Lord. These two scriptures alone speak to the importance of us guarding our hearts and minds. When you know something to be truth, 
you are comforted by it, you have confidence in it, and nothing can shake you, not even what you see. And so when God said those words to me, he took me back to a a vision of something that actually happened. This was a couple years ago, actually, already, because we were, um, I've been where I'm living two and a half years. And so um, this happened prior to that. But my son, who is completely vegan now, um, was in the process of, he was vegetarian and pescatarian and he went back and forth. But he had this one thing that was, that he loved that didn't bother his stomach. He was born with acid uh, horrible acid reflux to the to the place where he would do projectile vomiting as a baby like it was he's had some health issues and he's walked through so much but he um anyways he's completely vegan and um this particular thing didn't upset his stomach right and it was cookie butter (laughs) and um it also gave him something sweet feeling like he could cheat a little bit because if you know him he has this um he counts his calories this boy is like dedicated to the cause right runs like 13 miles a day sometimes 20 it's it's crazy but this is his one thing that he had was this cookie butter right and you're thinking what cookie butter got to do with what we know well i'm gonna tell you i'm sure i've shared this story with you before but um we were at target or target as my daughter has loved to call it since she was younger and so we were at target and uh, we had run in and i have and, and i always not always i i always like to try to have a list a shopping list it keeps me honest to my budget it keeps me focused and it keeps me I just honestly have a checklist brain and so I need that right so I have this list of things and I made lists with my children were younger and I would say this is what we're going in the store to get you pick your three things don't ask me for nothing else um and I and thank you God um he says it's necessary keep sharing and I and I and they know that I'm in a that they they know how I operate right they know mama got a list mama going in for her things this is what she's going to do in my mind I've already mapped out my my journey through how I'm going to go in the store and I'll hit this department first and I'll hit this and I'll do that next not because I'm super organized but honestly it's just one of my things one of my issues and I call it checklist brain um but anyways we had gone in the store it was busy too it was a busy busy time it was actually um around the time where people were starting to get back in the store after COVID. And um, we were in the store and um, my son waited to the very last minute to text me because he didn't come in the store to say, hey, mom. He called and said, hey, mom. He texted me and said, hey, mom, can you get me some cookie butter? I was like, man. And Sierra was like, what is it? But she saw, she knows my face. She knew me. I was like, man, even though I was fussing, I was headed back to get the cookie butter, right? But I made this decision that we we're going to trick him. We we're going to trick him. And I told the princess, do not look him in his eyes because she is the weakest link. Like, and you, you, there's this saying, I remember exactly, you're only as le- weak as your... Le- weak is your weakest link and um but I love it because she has this integrity that is unshakable um she won't even let it be shaken by her mother not that I've tried to shake in my daughter's integrity but just trust me she will she gonna she gonna make you tell the truth like I told y'all about the whole Santa Claus thing but that's another story for another time again but anyway um she knew me right so I said to her, listen, don't look at him when you get in the car. Don't look him in his eyes. Do not let him question you. If you need to stick your earbuds in your ear and start listening to your music right away so that you do not hear him because she ain't even good with pretending, do not give him eye contact. We're going to hide this butter underneath this particular thing. He's not going to know it's there because what he's going to do, because I know him, he's going to scan this bag. He's going to scan our hands. He's going to scan our face. And even though lying is not something I do or like to do I, I could hold my own as far as like uh, a joke at least I get I get five good minutes in I try to anyway at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it um the kids are, are sure that I don't um but sometimes you know you gotta have a little joke and you gotta have a little ability to be able to trick people just a little bit just for fun for play not in a manipulative type way right so anyways here we are. We decide we're going to go to the car. The princess did good. She was holding her own. I'm talking about she was solid. Like, she was struggling a little bit, but she was solid. Solid. If you know her, she was solid. Um. So, anyways, um, I said to him, I didn't. I said, look, dude. So, I had to make myself sound a little bit, like, ticked off or angry, like, getting on my nerves. And um, so that I could keep pressing through this thing, right? I'm like, dude, listen, I was already in the line. You waited too late. I asked you when we went in the store if you wanted something. You didn't tell me, blah, 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 blah. I said, look, I was in the line already. 
And so it was it was crazy because my son kept saying, are you serious? For real, like you for real, you didn't get the apple butter. I mean, the um, cookie butter. But the thing about his tone wasn't an arrogance like you owed it to me. It was like a child who was disappointed. Not in the fact that he didn't get the cookie butter, but it was almost like he was his his what he knew about me was being tested. Lord, I thank you. Come on and bring this thing together, Holy Ghost. Like what he knew about me was being challenged. Like something was coming up against the knowledge of what he knew about me. You understand me? What he knew to be true about my character. And like he, there was some shakiness in his spirit. Like he was, it, it went to a different level. And before I could be like, oh God, I'm messed with my child too deep. Something pivoted and he said, nah, man. He turned around, put his seatbelt on, crunk up the car. He said, my uh, my cookie butter's in the um in that bag. I said, well, you're arrogant, aren't you? You're you cocky. He said, no, nah, I'm confident in your character. He said, I know your character. I said, excuse me, what you mean? You know my character. He said, I know you. He says, you love us. He said, and you, the way you love us and the type of mom that you are and the character that you have, that even if you were in the line and you were the next person in the line and your hands was full, just like you said, and you couldn't carry another thing. You are the mom who would get out of that line, go back and get the cookie butter, figure out how to get it, carry it in your hands and purchase it because that's how you love us. So I'm not worried. I can't see my cookie butter in this bag. I know what you're saying. And he was like, Sierra, you wrong for trying to trick me. But I know the cookie butter's in the bag. So <laughs> how does this compare with it being in your head? Baby, you've got to know that God is who he is. You've got to know that the God that you have believed for all this time is not going to fail you. You've got to know that what he, who he is and his character is enough to hang on one more day, one more second, one more minute. I'm going to believe him today. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe you today because I got too much behind me, too many testimonies behind me. I, I, I know too much about you. We got too much history together is what my son was telling me. Lady, we got too much history together. He said, I know your character. And I thought, wow. Wow. Not to my, my, my praise, but that his confidence was in my character. That thing did something on the inside of me. That thing did something on the inside of me. Today, I pray this word does something on the inside of you that causes you to trust the character of our God, that it causes you to know that God will move heaven and earth and shake up hell on your behalf. Some would say such a knowledge from my child is considered a weakness, but really, I want you to know that love for me will always bring power and and power accompanies love. In the word of God in 2 Timothy uh, 5 and 17 it says that he did not give us a spirit of fear or 2 and 17 one of those but power and of love and of a sound mind with love came power and soundness of mind again we back to the thing of it being in your head God is giving you a sound mind he's giving you the mind of Christ so everything you need is in your head so even though the thing in your head right now might be that I'm depressed it might be that I'm, I'm in poverty it might be all the other lies you need to know that God loved you enough He gave you the power to change your thoughts and that you operate in a sound mind. Yes, this kind of love, this kind of understanding brings vulnerability, but it also brings fulfillment, joy, and happiness. Giving your children a place to be secure is never wrong. Um, I'm going to say it again. Giving your kids a place of security and, and trust is never wrong. Sometimes we have been made to believe this false narrative that abandoning our children is making them stronger and better, but it's not. Uh, Treating our children bad is making them stronger and better. Making them tough and hard makes them stronger and better. I sat at a funeral a couple weeks back and a man said, my mother gave me a curse and a blessing. She cursed me by making me so strong that I can withstand anything that I don't have to, you know, talk about things that I can handle everything and I can teach other people through this strength. But then he said it was a weakness also because he had to be strong. So he didn't even have room to be weak, right? 
I read on Facebook a few weeks back, this woman had said to her daughter, happy birthday to you. I can't believe you're 14. In just a few more years, you're going to be 18 and you'll be on your own. Not realizing, because that's probably how she was raised. And I no doubt believe that because she's been abandoned so many times that she don't even realize that you're preparing your child for dysfunction and abandonment. I'm not saying we're wrong for wanting our children to grow up or giving them the tools they need. But I want you to understand that even in situations where it seems like a certain time frame has come, Lord, thank you, that we have to not give time so much weight and that we've got to give God time, literally hand him time. He created it in his hands anyway, but he is not confounded by it. So don't push away your children and other people based on a time frame again if that's your word then ain't nobody gonna know it if you just keep your face straight ahead and just listen to the podcast bless the name of the lord and let that thing settle down in your spirit and trust the god who is eternal to right all your wrongs to fix all things and to help you regulate the mind that he created and the mind that he has given to you that supersedes the physical part of your mind, the neural pathways. I, I, I said to God last night, I said, um, I was in the shower, and um, because it's something about water and God, and anyway, um, I said, Lord, I need you. I need you to reroute the neural pathways that, that, that the thoughts in my mind travel, and I need you to never again allow my thoughts to travel down that pathway. So I know that scientifically it takes time to reroute certain thoughts and to close off neural pathways of negativity that your mind had flowed in. But I don't have to wait that long because you are the God who created my body, my mind and my brain. And I need you to close off those neural pathways, not block them. Don't let me lose anything, but just reroute my thoughts to the path in my brain down the neural pathways that you want my thoughts to travel that they not only ever travel any other way again, but that you will open up other neural pathways to your truth about who I am, what you've called me to do in this earth, and then send them down a path that will create a supernatural courage on the inside of me to walk those things out. That's my prayer for you today as well. You've listened to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. God bless you, and have a wonderful week.